Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. We are recording this Thursday morning, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. That means that we have the new information from the Labor Department. An additional 2.1 million Americans filed for unemployment benefits last week. And so that means 40.7 million people over the last 10 weeks have filed for unemployment. The news is kind of weird because I would say there's a good news and bad news part of this report. Let me start with the bad news. The bad news is that the Labor Department is also starting to update us on the number of people who are applying for aid under the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. That's the federal program for self-employed and gig workers. Okay. Well, guess what? That number, is it's incomplete, but it was 8 million people already. So you know, we're probably pushing closer to like 50 million Americans who have filed for unemployment insurance. Now, here's the good news. The good news is that finally we've gotten to this one moment in time where continuing claims, meaning the number of people who are already collecting unemployment benefits, that number finally went down. So after 10 weeks of going up, 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 up to 25 million, it seems to now have dropped down to 21 million. So, I mean, look, these numbers are devastating. They're still so high and so, you know, just agonizing for anyone who is impacted by it. But perhaps that we have seen the worst doesn't mean it won't remain tough. It's just that you've got to see a bottom before you can start rebuilding. With that said, let's go and get to your questions. James writes, with my income from my pension, social security, and working part-time, I'm still way below the amount that would exclude me from receiving a stimulus check. The problem I believe I'm having is that I supplement my income annually with investment money. So when they base my eligibility on my tax return, it looks like I made a lot more money that makes me ineligible. Can I appeal this and how do I go about doing so? I don't think you can, James. I believe that there's no, they're not, they don't make a distinction about whether you make the money with earned income or whether you make the money with passive income. Once you're over the limit, you ain't getting it. So be happy you're making as much as you're making. Um, I won't even tell you what Mark just said, which is, uh, let me put it to you. Let me translate it and make it nice, which is enjoy the fact that you've got a lot of money from investments and thank your lucky stars you have that. And uh, you probably uh, should just give up and not waste your time on trying to appeal anything because you make too much money. And that's a good thing. Okay, good. Herb writes, my wife and I converted approximately $30,000 from a conventional IRA to a Roth IRA. To do this, our tax bill is $2,500. Is there any way to lower it before the July 15th payment date? No, there is no way to do that. And is there any way to spread the payment out without penalty? No, there's no way to do that. So you did it. I don't, I, you know, this is for 2019. That's all in the past. Theoretically, I guess you could have made a traditional IRA contribution, but if you're really trying to actually convert to a Roth, chances are you want to be in a Roth environment. So just pay the tax. The gross income with a conversion comes to $94,000. Stop being schnorers, all of you. Uh, You know, $94,000, you're in the 22% tax bracket. Relax, pay the bill, move on. Don't sweat the small stuff. Sandra writes, I love the podcast. I'm 27. I just graduated from medical school. I'm about to start my first real job, a residency. That's actually not a job. It's, I think, sort of slave labor, but thank you for doing that. Okay. So Sandra's Hospital offers a 403B with matching contributions. She says, I plan to maximize my contributions, but I know, Jill, you're a big fan of the Roth. Am I supposed to have both kinds of retirement accounts? Is it better for me to have one over the other? I'm single. I've got no school debt thanks to my family, and I thank you for your family too. Six months of savings for an emergency fund. In addition to retirement, I'm wondering if you have advice on how to start investing in my 20s. How much of my paycheck should I save in an exchange-traded fund or a mutual fund? Is it worth talking to a financial advisor at this stage? Can you recommend any books, podcasts, online courses for me to learn how to invest? Thanks again. Wish to hear more investment stories and strategies for young professionals in their 20s and 30s. First of all, Sandra, let me start with a layup. Have I got a book for you? How about my book, which is fantastic? 
if I do say so myself. The dumb things smart people do with their money, 13 ways to right your financial wrongs. I do talk about investing in there. You'll get a good feeling around that. In terms of what you should be doing, you don't need a financial advisor. If the hospital has a traditional 403B, then absolutely put money in there. Then in addition, you can start your own Roth IRA. I know that you're a resident, which means you make bupkis, and that means you probably will be able to actually make a Roth contribution as well. Between those two, then you get that automated, and as you make more money, we'll figure out what your next layer of investing should be. Index funds, you can do that at any of the places you might hear me talk about. That could be at Schwab, that could be a T. Rowe Price or TD Ameritrade or Fidelity or Vanguard. I don't really care. Wherever you can buy cheap index funds. And if I have missed anything, then please follow up with me. Bill writes, is there any concern that there could be a run on money at the banks like we had during the depression? Well, Bill, I mean, there's always a concern if you want to drive yourself crazy over things that are probably not going to happen. So I, I appreciate that. I can be that person for sure. That said, I don't think that's the issue right now. We don't have a liquidity problem at the banks. Could there be? I guess eventually, but I don't see it happening. This is not the nature of this particular crisis right now. Okay. Um, and here is our last email of the day. And remember, if you have a financial question, all you have to do is send us an email, ask Jill at jillonmoney.com. And listen to this, just sink into this one, gang. Hi, Jill, with lots of eyes like, hi. One of the first things I do every morning is to listen to your daily podcast. Thank you for your calming tone and great insight as we sail through these choppy times. I live in the Caribbean on the beautiful island of St. Lucia, and I use an investment service company to invest only in index stocks and bonds. My question, what is Dow on the stock exchange? I know it might be a rookie question since it just crossed my mind. I decided to shoot you a quick email. Well, first of all, the Dow is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So that is 30 stocks. They're historic in nature because the index has been around the longest, but it's not the broadest representation of what's going on in the stock market. Now that said, I also will point out that Dow Incorporated is a company, which in and of itself is a stock, right? It's a company, it's a material science company, big multinational. So that's different than the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So if you're looking for something to follow and you want to get a sense of what's going on in the U.S. stock market, I would encourage you not to look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which again is just 30 stocks, and use the S&P 500 index. That will give you broader representation. Okay, how's that? Pretty good. Okay, gang, it's the end of a work week. For many of you, the beginning of the weekend means that you're starting to consider whether you're going to go out, whether you're going to create these weird social bubbles, what you're going to do, I beg you, seriously, after looking at some of the photos and videos after Memorial Day weekend, I am begging each and every one of you to please be more conservative. There is nothing that is that important. So wash your hands and wear your masks and maintain your social distance and do something nice for yourself. Do something nice for somebody else. Reach out, connect, but please, please be careful. The health of all of us, guess what? That is going to be the determining factor of whether this economy can recover in a more sustainable way. We just cannot go back to having like disease spreading all over the place and everyone back sheltering in place. So please go easy. I get it. It's hard to do, but you know what? You can do it. And if you've got any sort of financial issue that's on your mind throughout the weekend and it's driving you nuts, don't forget, send us an email, askjill at jillonmoney.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <music>